If you snore or wake up gasping for air at night while you sleep, you might have sleep apnea, which could be life-threatening if left untreated. In this video, we will learn what obstructive sleep apnea is and we will go over how to prevent it and treat it. Welcome everybody, this is Dr. Valentin here at Houston Metropolitan Medical. And I would like to give uh, great thanks um, for this uh, gift. Somebody that watches our video noticed that I liked Formula One and decided to gift us this um, Lewis Hamilton Formula One, which is currently my, my favorite driver. Thank you so much. And um, so we will um, proceed with uh, the video for sleep apnea. But what is obstructive sleep apnea? Uh, sleep apnea is when you stop breathing during your sleep. And this happens when our airway relaxes and our tongue falls to the back and obstructs our airways. So what happens during obstructive sleep apnea, as we mentioned, when, when our airway relaxes, our throat relaxes, and our tongue falls back and obstructs our airway, um, our oxygen saturation decreases because we stop breathing. Also, because we stop breathing and we're not ventilating, our carbon dioxide will increase and our blood pressure and heart rate will increase as well to try to deliver more oxygen throughout our body. And there's also cortical arousal, which basically means you'll have less sleep, you'll feel more alert because of the all the adrenaline that's pumping because your oxygen is getting low, and also sleep fragmentation. So what risk factors would predispose you to um, developing obstructive sleep apnea? Well, obesity is the number one, um, also increasing age, the male sex, uh, having large tonsils and large neck, and other risk factors that are not anatomical include um, alcohol consumption or intake, and any sedatives, any anything that helps you with sleep, uh, that will help relax more your airway, will make sleep apnea worse. And also, any nasal congestion or allergies will also make uh, sleep apnea worse as well. So what symptoms can somebody that has sleep apnea present with? Well, you might feel like no matter how much you sleep, you are never rested and you're always having excessive daytime sleepiness. Most of my patients that come into the clinic complaining of excessive fatigue and feeling tired and sleepy throughout the day um, get very tired after eating or it, while driving for a prolonged period of time. You might also experience decreased concentration, problems focusing, and problems with learning. It's a very also very complaint, common complaint that my patients bring to me um, when I start working them up for other things as well, but sleep apnea is always in the back of my mind. Sometimes you may feel that uh, you wake up many times during the night and don't even know why. And other times you might be waking up many times during the night to go pee. And it not necessarily could be uh, enlarged prostate, sleep apnea at night, present with nocturia, or waking up many times to go sleep, to go pee, sorry. Um, you may also present with decreased libido and sexual dysfunction can happen as well as it's been associated that patients with sleep apnea can have decreased testosterone. Um, so at nighttime, you can, you can experience several things as well. Um, during your sleep, you might snore loudly, uh, which most of the times the patients that come into the clinic are unaware of, but it's the most common complaint from the spouse. So every time that I have the opportunity, I always ask the spouse if they are present during the visit. Other complaints are headaches during uh, the nighttime, um, I have patients that present with, uh, the only complaint that they present is with is a massive pounding headache that wakes them up from sleep. And once they start breathing, the CO2 decreases and your vessels in your brain go back to their normal size and the headache goes away. So how can I tell if I might have sleep apnea or not? So you can answer, answer a simple questionnaire called the stop bank questionnaire. Um, it has several questions that are targeted and specifically to check for symptoms and, and signs of patients with sleep apnea. For example, they, it asks if you snore loudly at night, if you are often tired or fatigued during your, your, during your day. Um, has anybody observed that you stop breathing at night or do you ever wake up choking or gasping for air? Uh, do you have high blood pressure? Uh, is your BMI or body mass index um, greater than 35? 
are you older than 50 years old? It also asks if your neck circumference or your shirt size is uh, 16 or greater in inches. And will also ask you if you're the male sex. And once we answer all the questions, it will give you a score. And a score from 0 to 2 presents with a low risk for obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, score from 3 to 4 is an intermediate risk. And a score from 5 to 6, 5 to 8, sorry, is a high risk for obstruct obstructive sleep apnea. So now that we have the symptoms, we have a stop band questionnaire with an intermediate or a high risk for sleep apnea, what's next? So we would order a sleep study. And a sleep study can be done at a facility or it also can be done in your home. And um, I personally recommend doing the facility. Um, it's one night. It's more accurate, but obviously convenience to doing it at home. You can do it, um, but it's a three-night uh, study, and they average out the time that you fall asleep. So in this sleep study, we basically look for the AHI, or the apnea hypopnea index, which is the average number of times that you stop breathing during your night. And a normal uh, AHI is less than five events per hour. In mild obstructive sleep apnea, the AHI is between 5 and 15 events per hour. In moderate obstructive sleep apnea, the AHI is between 15 and 30 events per hour. And in severe cases, is an AHI of greater than 30. So how do we treat sleep apnea? Well, weight loss, weight loss is the definitive treatment. Um, a study by the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine highlighted the importance of weight gain and weight loss in obstructive sleep apnea. So a 10% weight gain over four years is associated with a 32% increase in the apnea hypopnea index. And the opposite was seen with a 10% weight loss with a 26% decrease in the apnea hypopnea index. So there is an FDA approved medication for obese patients with sleep apnea. In the study in the New England Journal of Medicine, Patients who were obese and had moderate or severe obstructive sleep apnea were enrolled to take tercipitide versus placebo for a year. And they found that patients taking tercipitide were, um, had a more reduction in their AHI. We also use a CPAP machine as it provides continuous airway pressure to keep your airway open. And after we diagnosed you after the original sleep study, we might order a titration sleep study. In this study, which is another sleep study, um, but there's a technician adjusting the CPAP machine pressures to the optimal settings. For patients who cannot tolerate the CPAP machine, uh, you can't sleep with a mask in your face, you can't have a mask in your nostrils, or you move around too much, you sleep on your side for whatever reason, etc. We have other things like mouth guards that prevent the movement of your tongue to the back of your mouth. There's also some surgeries like the Inspire surgery, which basically um, inserts a nerve stimulator in your tongue and you activate it at night and it basically moves your tongue forward every time you take a deep breath at night when you sleep and prevents your tongue from falling back in your mouth and obstructing your airway. So why is it so important that we treat sleep apnea? Well, sleep apnea may increase the risk for developing high blood pressure, which is associated with heart attack and stroke. It can also increase the risk of arrhythmias like, for example, atrial fibrillation and heart attack due to the increase in sympathetic system response, which is excessive adrenaline, which increases blood pressure, uh, heart demand, all of that. Because of the low um, oxygenation and decrease in oxygen when you stop breathing, you might see polycythemia or an excessive amount of red blood cells. And this makes your blood thick and is associated with strokes. But most importantly, sleep apnea increases the risk of sudden death, primarily due to its strong link in cardiovascular issues and the strain it places on your heart. So the risk of death from any cause is increased by three to six times, especially on patients with moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea. So we have gone over what sleep apnea is, what risk factors predispose you to it, and what symptoms to look out for. We have also gone over how to diagnose it how we treat it, and why it's so important that we treat it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to keep up to date with our most recent videos. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.